Hi, my name is Kathy Burns. I'm a member of the parish since the late 1990s, and the church at Villanova has been part of my faith journey since I was a freshman at Villanova in 1978. In 2000, my husband and I were married at the church. It's a special place to us. I feel humbled to be recording this reflection today. I'm a lay person in the pews. I'm a person who has attentively read scripture, listened to homilies, studied theology even, but I bring no expertise and no training in offering this reflection today. I will simply share some thoughts from my heart. Two words came to my mind when I read today's readings, love and generosity. Sirach tells us, wrath and anger are hateful things. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Hate not your neighbor. To do these things, we need love and generosity. The Psalm reminds us that our Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, rich in kindness and compassion. In other words, the Lord is filled with love and generosity. That is our model. And the reading from the Gospel of Matthew is a familiar story. I want to suggest that we read it again, but read the second part of the story first. A man is owed a debt. Let's call him our friend. Our friend goes to the person who owes him money, demands it. The man begs our friend, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But our friend is unmoved and demands the payment. If we read only that part of the story, we might think, okay, well, that sort of makes sense. We should pay our debts. Those who lend have the right to be repaid. This story doesn't make our friend out to be such a bad guy. Accountability is good and all that. Let's now move back to the beginning of the story. In the first half of the story, we learned that our friend himself had had a significant debt owed to the king or the Lord. Our friend cannot pay it and begs the Lord, be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Familiar words to us now that we've already read the second half of the tale. And what does the Lord do? He models for us love and generosity. He can afford to forgive the debt, so he does. He does not say, okay, pay me back later. That alone would have been quite generous in and of itself. No, he says, moved with compassion, with love and generosity, you're released. The loan is forgiven. No need ever to pay me back. The Lord in the story has modeled what God asks of us. We hear the ask in Sirach, forgive your neighbor's injustice, the loan taken but that cannot be repaid. We hear the ask actually earlier in the Gospel of Matthew when we hear Jesus instructing the disciples how to pray Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. But our friend did not follow the model he had been given. Yet that is the model for us. If we wish to live for the Lord, as Paul in the reading from the Romans tells us to. Alongside this theme of forgiveness, which really is about compassion, love, generosity, is another theme I want to mention briefly. In the story, our friend enjoyed a certain privilege that we see in the first part of the tale. The privilege of whatever benefit he received in acquiring the debt from the Lord. And he also received the privilege of the debt forgiveness that the Lord was in a position to offer him. Yet, when our friend sought payment from the one who owed him a debt, he was not mindful of his own privilege. Our friend was not tuned into the reality that he had received a great benefit through no merit on his part. He did not use his privilege to help another as the Lord had. Instead, our friend helped keep the other person down, despite the fact that he had received a gratuitous and positive benefit himself. Our friend did not share his good fortune. He was neither loving nor generous. He did not use his privilege to help build up that other person. He failed to love his neighbor failed to be generous with his neighbor when our friend had the capacity to do so because his debt had been forgiven him. 
He did not hear Jesus' call to love our neighbor, the call we see illustrated in the first part of the story. To wrap up, I see two distinct themes captured in the readings today, stemming from the ideals of love and generosity. First, forgiveness, which comes from a place of love for neighbor, which is a gift to give that benefits both the giver and the recipient of the forgiveness. Forgiveness of a debt, forgiveness of a wrong heals us. Through the forgiveness, we find God's love and generosity active in our lives. Second, the theme of privilege. The idea that we each have benefits in our life that came to us serendipitously. And the idea that we need to be aware of that privilege, that wind blowing at our backs. And to make good use of it by sharing with others by not keeping it to ourselves or our own kind. It's a way of loving our neighbor and being kind and generous and compassionate towards our neighbor. In my faith journey, that's what I believe God, Jesus, Holy Spirit call us to. Compassion, love, generosity. Every day, including today. Thank you for listening and may God's grace and spirit be with us always. Thanks.